welcome everyone. It's it's so great to uh, to see your faces, to hear your voices, um, and to and to reconnect with you. Um, over the past three years, uh, going back to almost four years for some of you, we've we've done quite a bit of work together. Some of you, um, you know, I I connected with over Skype and over the phone. Some of you was mostly on email and we never actually uh, got to hear each other's voices. And some of you we actually um, have met before in person, either at Cody as part of educational programs or, or as part of a, a Participedia fellowship that, that some of you um, were involved in doing. So it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling very energized and very happy to see everyone here and, and um, hope that more can join over the next few minutes. Um, the idea for today uh, is is to just have a, a check in with each other. These are these are very um, uncertain and, and unprecedented time as we times as we know, and uh, in times like these, it, it, it's it's very nice to connect with with people and use the opportunity maybe to reach out to people we haven't um, in in quite a while. So that's that's the first sort of um, motivation for the meeting, and then given the, the the particular group that we have gathered here and the experiences that you have we thought we'd try to have a conversation just around what we've what we've kind of named like engaging with with uncertainty or engaging in a context of uncertainty all of our work has to do with engaging um, other people um, community members um, women and girls who, whoever it is that you work with um, and it, this, these times require us to kind of adapt in the way that we do that. And so we want to have just a chat about that, um, but also in terms of, of using the moment to have a bit of a reflection on what are we, what are we learning from, from these adaptations and from the moment in general. So those are, are the, the kinds of motivations for, to have this meeting uh, on, on our end. And I'm saying our because this is being co-hosted with my friend and colleague, Anne-Marie Smith. Um, Anne-Marie is, is on the call and joining us from uh, her home in Jamaica. Um, she's a graduate of the Cody Institute, like you, uh, from the diploma in 2017. And since then, she and I have worked on a number of different initiatives together. She came back in 2018 to co-facilitate with me a, a two-week course as part of the 2018 diploma and uh, was part of, we worked together as part of a fellowship where we um, kind of, well, she developed um, uh, some thinking around how to accompany graduates um, as, as part of, a, of an accompaniment process for the, the thematic area and so forth. So Anne-Marie is, um, is a specialist of leadership and organizational development. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that she's agreed to, to, to host this conversation with me. And as we'll talk about a bit later in the call, um, as a follow-up to this conversation, to those, to those of you who are interested, we will continue to work with you, um, hopefully to produce a, a bit of, of, of written work as well, if, if that interests anyone. So um, it's just a, a brief introduction uh, to my my partner here uh, today, um, and Marie. I'm not I'm not sure if you wanted to say just a few words before we begin, and then uh, then I'll let you carry on with uh, with the next couple slides, Anne Marie. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Julian, just let me know if you're able to hear me clearly. Yes. I am. It's not. Uh, it's a bit low, but I think uh, your sound here? is a little low. Please, a little louder. Okay. Let me see if I can do anything about that. Is that any better? Not uh, so much. A little. A little bit. Okay. All right. I'll try to see how I can keep that going. Um, if you're not hearing me, I'm trying to adjust my headset. Just give me a second. Or let me know because it might be easier, might be better for me not to use the headset if you're having a challenge hearing me. 
but let's see how we, we, we get to where we need to get to. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you. Um, I haven't met many of you. I've met almost all of you names in one form or the other before because of my work with, with Julian. Maria, it's good to see you. Uh, Maria and I were in the 2017 diploma together. It's great to have you in this meeting and it's good to see your face. Um, haven't seen Maria since that time. So this morning, as Julian said, we really just want to check in and, and reconnect with each other and find out not just how we are doing in our respective corners of the world, but how it is that we are able to engage with our communities and what it is that we are learning about the world and how the world responds in times like these and what it is that we are learning about ourselves and what are we able to continue to do in the different areas of our work. Very low. It's, it's, still very low. it's still quite low, Anne Marie. Um, if you take the I'm, headset I'm go off, is head that okay? I'm going to go without the headset. I'm going to try that. That no, I think I there am is. getting nothing now. <laughs> no, it's. I think there is no sound now. Yeah, there is no sound. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sound now. Maybe she can put it back and then increase the volume. And that might be the things. problem. Just give me a minute. Please. Technical support. See, this is the benefit of having children at home. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> yeah. So while um, while we're sorting out the audio, maybe I'll just move us through the first of the slides because it's it's really just about um, making sure we're, we're <laughs> making sure things like sound and audio and so on uh, are working. So Anne Marie, are you back on now? Um, am I any louder? Are you am I any clearer now? A little bit, I think. A bit, you're clear a bit. Okay. How is that? Well, Try for again. me, it's been good all through. I have been getting you all through, Anne Marie. Okay. But I think everyone else does not. No. No, no. It's not so good. I think it was it was probably better. Um, better before, yeah. Before. Um, and maybe, I suppose, uh, it might just be uh, having to use a facilitator's voice and speak a bit louder. Oh, I don't know if I can use a facilitator's voice. <laughs> Is it any better? I think it's okay. It's yes, I think it's it yeah. fine now. We mm -hmm. can manage. Yeah. And then the rest All of right, us great. can turn up our volume as much as, as possible. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, perfect. Great. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you, guys. Thank you, patients. All right, thank you. So, so I'll go ahead with the slide, um, Julian, if that's okay. Yes, and you're loud and clear now. Yes, you're okay. loud and clear now. Okay, great, thanks. All right, so this is really just about ensuring that we can have a good experience, we can hear each other, um, and that our, as best as possible, the noises or the whatever is happening in our background does not interfere with the, with the, with the, with the experience. We do recognize that um, many, we are, most of us are working from home this morning and so the family is there and where you have children we may have um them coming in at points in time that's all we're talking about what we're talking about is doing everything else we can to ensure a good experience so we're asking you um where appropriate to please close all other software applications ex well except zoom of course um please mute your phone sometimes you forget to do that as best as possible. I know some people might be using their phones. 
for this morning's call, but as best as possible, please use your cell phones or if you, if you have home phones or office phones that might ring during this time to take care of those as yeah. well. Um, where your community can support you, just remind them of your unavailability for the next um, hour and a half or so. I do know as well, or we do know as well, that where you have um, the, the actual uh, cable connection that can sometimes Sound be more stable than please. Wi-Fi. So if you're able to make that choice, we, we recommend that you do so as well. And where you have headsets, um, that can also help with the background also. If you're able to use that, we appreciate that as well. Um, you may go to the next slide, Julian. All right, so many of you would be might maybe familiar with Zoom um, and have become even more familiar over the last month or so. But just to help us as we get started, you're already in, so you would have joined using your audio. So I don't know that we need to do that. And I can see that everybody's audio is connected. Uh, when you're not speaking, we invite you to mute your, yourselves, and we're going to ask you as much as possible to do that now. So a couple of people are unmuted. We're going to invite you to mute yourselves until you are going to be speaking. Thank you very much. Okay. Jagat and, and um, patients, if you're able to mute yourself as well. Now, we, we, as much as possible, we are going to be um, trying to maintain, as, as, to allow us to listen to each other and not be talking over each other. And so we are going to invite you as best as possible to use the raise and feature. Some of you may know where to find that. And of course, depending on the device you're using, you might be seeing those um, icons at the bottom of your screen, at the top of your screen. You may have to click on more to find it. But um, your raised hand feature, in some instances, you click on more, and where you have your, uh, where it's telling you to, you have a couple of other, um, a couple of other tools. There's a raise hand tool that we invite you to use when that time comes as well. As part of the ensuring we have a good experience, we also have the chat feature. And so we invite you to where you, where you need to, to take post questions and comments and so on in chat. And for me, the chat is at the bottom of my screen. For some of us, it might be at the top of our screens. I see that many of you are already using chat. So as best as possible, we also post comments and questions in chat. Um, and we also ask that more, more often than not to, to, to improve your own experience that unless you need to, you're speaking and we need to see you, that you can also keep your videos off. Um, for some persons, that's going to give them a better experience and will allow you to actually stay with us in the call. So where you need to, we ask you to also keep your videos off. When we get into our actual conversations, we have a few other guidelines that we'd like to share. That's about how we, we ensure that everyone can be heard and feel appreciated as we engage. So thank you very much. And uh, Julian, back over to you. Great, thanks Anne-Marie. So, so with the technical uh, details out of the way now, I think we can, we can really get started with um, today's discussion and, and agenda. And quite simply, as I said when I was uh, kicking off there, I, you know, the, the, the plan for today is really just to have a conversation. I'm hearing a bit of echo of my own voice from somewhere. I'm not sure if someone is not muted that could mute themselves. Uh, now it's better. Thank you. So, so yeah, so the idea, um, we're, we're basically uh, looking to do just kind of three rounds of discussions today. The first one um, we'll start right away with just a round of introductions and checking in and, and, and how we're doing. And we'll do that rather rather quickly because I think we'll have some more um, substantive discussions in the second and third round of discussion. Um, after the first round of discussion um, and introductions, 
we'll, I'll, I'll spend just a few minutes giving a bit of a, of a contextual um, overview um, very briefly to set up a conversation about, um, you know, what is it that we're experiencing at this moment um, as, as practitioners interested in engaging people uh, in communities and, and uh, in our, in our um, I'm just going to yep. mute. I'm hearing some voices. Um, following the uh, that first round around kind of what experiences we're having, um, we'll do what, we'll do a, a third round just on on kind of our, our reflections on the moment and, and and what learning or lessons are we beginning to draw from what is going on around the world. And in our own uh, in our own environments, and then we'll just conclude um, with a with a brief uh, slide just on on an invitation that that we are throwing out to you uh, around if anyone is interested in in oh, getting involved with us in, in a bit of kind of reflective yeah. writing and documentation, and, and we'll give some detail about that. We're hoping to have all of that done in the next um, hour and, and ten minutes or so. So we'll invite you as we go to just be mindful of, of time. We'd like to hear from everyone. So as we're going through different rounds of discussion, uh, if, if everyone can, can keep their statements um, brief and then that would allow enough time to have some, some actual, uh, some questions and answers and dialogues. So uh, during the, uh, the discussion as well. Does that make sense? So then, yes, yes, Julia. So I think we've largely uh, covered covered this slide. Um, again, right, the reason why we're we're meeting today is is we wanted to reconnect with all of you. Um, there are there are in total twenty graduates who have who have like you developed a case study for Participedia, um, and and worked with myself and Rachel. Um, to develop that. So, so there's a common experience there that, that we think is, is interesting and it's useful to reconnect, to hear the stories about what's happening. Um, we want to give this discussion a bit of a focus on, you know, yes, we, we, we know there are um, some challenges and we can hear about those as well. But um, we're also interested in, in understanding what opportunities or new ways of doing things are emerging in this moment and to, and to share those as well as the learning that is coming out of that. As I I and um, finally, the, the piece on, on documentation, which, which I've mentioned already. So I will pass it over back to Anne-Marie to lead us through this brief introduction exercise. Oh, oh, okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to be asking for a lot of forgiveness in today's, in this morning's meeting. Well, for not this morning for everyone in the in our meeting. Um, who is Zayed? Uh, could you mute your mic, Zayed? So that is. Um, or, or Julian, could you mute? Could you mute Zayed? Yes. Yeah, so, so sorry, uh, Zayed is, is is Moshira. So Moshira has joined. Um, in the last few minutes. Hi, Moshira. Hi, Moshira. Hi. Good to hear your voice. We're just going to mute your microphone um, because we're. Oh, thank you, Julian. How are you? Thank you, Julian. How are you? Good, good, good. Is my, my microphone is good? Yes, we can. We we hear you loud and clear, but we're also getting a bit of noise, so I'm going to mute your microphone now. And and when you want to okay. speak. Okay. Um, you okay. can you can unmute it, okay? Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Julian. And thank you, uh, Mushira. Mushira, thank you. Okay, guys, so let's see who we have in the room with us this morning. Uh, again, just some reminders to mute yourselves when you're not speaking. And of course, when it's your time to speak, to unmute yourselves. Um, we're applicable, and it might not be applicable in this particular round, but we're applicable to raise your hands to speak. 
And we're going to invite you to keep this very brief. We want to hear some things from and about you, and we'll let you know what those are. We're going to invite you to keep it brief, 30 or so seconds. Um, if you go to the next slide, Julian, we are going to be asking you to introduce yourselves. And what we want to know is your name, where you're from, and Julian will, is going to indicate where that is on the map. So what's your name, where you're from, and Julian will indicate on the map where you are. Your first point of engagement with Cody International Institute, mine was Diploma Development Leadership. And one thing that gets you going, what is one thing that gets you going, especially during this time? I am going to be calling out, calling on you as we go along. Um, and I'm gonna use the lineup when you click on the participant um, icon. I'm gonna just use the lineup that we see there to have people in, in share with us. And so um, I'm actually going to start with my staff, right? And then Julian, I'm gonna be coming to you because you're next on my, on my listing. So my name is Anne-Marie, it's Anne-Marie Smith. I'm from Jamaica, and Julian is going to show me where that is on the map. And again, my first point of engagement with Cody was the brilliant, excellent um, experience with the Diploma in Development Leadership. Um, and one thing that gets me going at this time, um, many things, but one thing is, is family. Family really gets me going on many different levels. So that's me, Julian. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, so yeah, my name is Julian. We've, we've met. I am from Antigonish, um, but I am currently reaching you from the West Coast on Vancouver Island, where I am with my wife's um, family for, for uh, a few weeks um, during this, this period. Um, my first engagement with Cody was when I began working there uh, in 2015. And one thing that, um, that gets me going is um, creating, creating opportunities for, for learning whereby I also learn from, from people that, that are around me um, and, and facilitating learning which I'm hoping to continue doing today. So next on the list would be patience, who is coming up as Aguin Zhang. And, and like myself, um, if, you're, if you're from one place, but you're joining us from another, um, we can indicate that on the map as well. Oh. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Patience Aguin Zhang from Cameroon. I'm currently in Cameroon. Can everyone get me? Yes. Can okay, yes, patient, you can hear you. All right, my first point of entry with Cody was in 2013 when I joined the Community Development Leadership uh, by Women. So I've engaged with Cody five times. Uh, the Diploma 2014 and, well, Women Leader Fellowship, uh, Participatia and uh, working with the uh, Women's Center. What gets me going, it's family and friends, because lately it's not been easy working and living. So that has kept me going and motivated me to come back and do like writing because I'm so much passionate about writing. And I keep writing and it's much of what I do now. I'm happy to reconnect with most of you or meet with everyone. Excellent. Thank you very much thank for that you for patience. Your All right. Most welcome. And so we're going to go to Jagat next. And remember to unmute yourself, Jagat. And to mute yourself, Princess. Patience, sorry. Yeah. So, Jagat? The first time in my code is 2001. Uh, community based development, -based development. Uh, 2001. 2001. And um, uh, one thing that uh, it's, uh, I really uh, study is the uh, peasant movement in Nepal and working with them. So, so Jagan, you, you're, 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 you're,
Yes, your mic was muted uh, just at the beginning there, but uh, you're joining us from Nepal, yeah? Yeah, 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 Nepal. Yeah, 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 Nepal. Excellent. Thank you for that, um, Jagat. And so the next person that we have there, um, I think is Mamuna. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That is Maimuna. Hello, everyone. My name is Maimuna Lebe. And I'm currently in West Africa. I'm from Benin and I'm currently calling from Benin. My first engagement went with the Kodi was in 2013 when I took the community development leadership led by women course. And after that, I came back mm. in 2015 as, um, for the diploma course. And later on, I engaged on the Participadia program. So what keeps me going is, is the impact that I think I'm making, the difference that I'm bringing in the life of those different people affected by emergencies. So I'm currently working as a gender in emergency specialist. And yeah, the, the thing, one thing that keeps me going is um, looking at those people and being sure that what I'm doing is somehow bringing some difference in their lives. Thanks. Excellent, thank you very much for sharing that with us. And Janico, you're next. Okay, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Hello. I am joining am you from Vancouver, British Columbia. So I'm just a mere four hours away from Julian. <clears throat> oh, sorry, there's a bit of feedback on my end. Um, hopefully that's not too annoying. Um, first point of uh, engagement. So I was first engaged with Cody during the Ocean Path Fellowship in 2015. Uh, I think I was the first cohort. And then I did the Participedia case study. One thing that gets me going. So I'm currently not working. I'm a high school teacher. It's young people that get me going. But right now, it's my garden. I'm very obsessed with planting. <laughs> I have this huge vegetable garden that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> I'm super pleased to be here. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for that. Um, I'm a garden freak myself, so it's happy to meet another garden freak. Maria. Hi, good morning. I am Maria Gangotena. I am from Ecuador. I am right now in Ecuador. Um, I was in the a diploma in 2017 with Anne Marie. We were classmates and department mates. Classmates and we shared that space. So now I keep um, developing a model to uh, to engage the pregnant women in their healthcare. Um, um, that is the work that I am doing for my PhD in San Effects. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maria for that. Uh, and so the next person I see on my list is, I see PWA coming up there. I'm not, is that Barbara? Yes, yes that's oh, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> right, great. Hello, I'm Barbara Megeri Magaji. Uh, I'm from Nigeria. I'm currently talking to you from Abuja in Nigeria. Uh, my first contact with Cody was in 2016, where I participated um, in the citizens-led accountability course, um, um, where Julian anchors. Um, and then the second time I came back for the participation in 2018. Um, what keeps me going, I think like most people, is family, especially with this current time. But importantly, because of the work I do, security, and justice. A lot of times I'm happy when detainees 
get um, give us feedback to say they are happy they've been released either because of the work that one is doing so for me that's what keeps me going excellent brilliant what does pwa mean um barbara partners west africa nigeria the name of my organization okay. <laughs> <Thanks. Yeah. laughs> um thank you very much with that okay hi yes um so my name is uh with end uh or uh wisa i uh, would prefer wisa and uh Egyptian, uh, but I'm currently residing in Tunisia. I just moved here uh, last month before the lockdown. Uh, my point of connection or first point of connection with Cody was in the development leadership um, diploma in 2016. Currently, what gets me going is family, obviously, but um, not just that. It's just that the fact that I always need to remember that Working from home means that work stresses get to invade our personal lives. Um, and also working with a toddler is not easy. Therefore, taking the time as a family to enjoy um, ourselves every night or every night, starting from dinner time um, and, and on. This is the most important part of my day. I always look forward to that um, every day. Thank you. Brilliant, I can well identify with that. And Trisha, you're next. Yeah. Hello, I'm Patricia Branson Akako uh, from Ghana. I work with NetRight. My first contact with Code was actually in 2014 when I gained admission to the diploma uh, program, but I deferred it to 2015. So Moshira and um, uh, and uh, now you still have forgotten your name, Mamuna. Mamuna and Mamuna are my mates. And it's good to hear Mamuna's voice because it's been a long time. What keeps me going is the women that, that I work for, the constituencies that I work with, and my grandchildren. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Mashira, let's hear from you now. Remember to unmute Thanks yourself, to Mashira. Okay, we, hello? We, we hear you now, Mashira. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Mashira from Egypt. Um, my first join to Kodi was in 2013 uh, in uh, one of the programs here in uh, Egypt uh, for um, tech, transparency and accountability. And then uh, I was in uh, Kodi at 2015 uh, for uh, the diploma. Uh, and Bartspedia was in 2017. Uh, um, I'm now working from home, as, uh, as all people do. Uh, but we are working in training for the teachers because we are working in the um, learning and education. Uh, so we are working with teacher online uh, for training that uh, was delayed because of the coronavirus. Uh, so um, the internet connection is very good now, or the connection with using the internet and uh, uh, social media is very good for us um, until these um, circumstances end. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's so good to have all of you with us in this meeting, coming in at different times of the day, and given all the different things that you're working on, those critical areas that uh, mean that we're continuing to take care of our different constituencies, whether those are locally, nationally, and in some instances, even internationally. Um, so good to have all of you, and we anticipate that as we continue in this conversation, we are really going to be learning a lot from each other, and gonna be inspiring others too, in terms of what we're doing and what it is that some of others of us can begin to do as well in our own corners. So Julian, I'm going to hand back over to you at this point to continue. Thank you. So, so I just want to spend a few minutes, um, just rapidly go through a few, fly, a few slides to 
to basically set a stage for the conversation we'd like to have for most of this meeting. Um, what's, what's very clear from uh, even just what we've heard now in, in these brief introductions is that, you know, the, the, <laughs> what is happening globally, and this is truly a global phenomenon, is affecting, uh, is affecting everyone. Um, and it's creating certain sets of challenges in our personal lives, but also maybe shifting opportunities in different places in our personal lives and how we interact with the relationships that we, that we have, whether they be with our toddlers or with our, you know, teenage uh, children or, or parents and so on. Um, we connect in different ways. Our relationships may, may be um, changing and, and there are new opportunities. So the times are new. The times are uh, like nothing we've ever experienced before. And we just want to begin the, the process here with a reflection, um, if you will, or a, uh, a thought, um, which is in these times where, that we haven't experienced, what might be possible now that wasn't before, right? Um, and there's a quote here that I read recently that, that, that kind of, for me, summarizes the, the, the moment in some way, right? It's not that anyone would wish for these massive events, for these shakeups, um, because they do cause uh, challenges, pain, suffering. But these history-making make, events don't ask our opinion. They are what they are. So the question is, what do we make of them? And even though fear may overwhelm us, um, leading us to expanding opportunity, um, it, it's, fear may overwhelm us, it, it, can also, it can sometimes lead us to look over an opportunity. Um, and then I like that this person was thinking, that's why we need each other, right? That's why, whether Zoom or any other means, um, to expand our, our souls and to notice the expansion of opportunity. So, so this is a bit of the tone that, that we'd like to set. It's that we are connecting with each other. We just want to be sharing um, with each other what we're experiencing and, and seeing in that if there is um, opportunity. I noticed that uh, some porn has joined us. Uh, some porn um, is, I believe, joining us from Thailand where it must be very, very late um, some porn, uh, do you hear us and can you just say hello? Uh, hi everyone. Yeah, I'm some porn from Thailand. Yeah. Good to see you, some porn. Yes, nice to meet you too. Yeah, how are you? Good, good. What time is it in Thailand? Uh, right now it's uh, uh, 9 p.m. I'm sorry for my uh, late because I'm just finished the Zoom meeting with my team also. Yes, no worries. We're happy that you, you were able to join. I'm just going to mute your mic at uh, some point, so remember to turn it on next time you wish to speak, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, we know we know that this is a global phenomenon and that it affects all of us. We know that that it has uh, implications for um, our freedoms. Um, you know, there are states of emergency in over eighty countries. There are um, over twenty-two countries with measures that affect expression. Uh, many countries. Julian. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, there's a, a really bad feedback. Could you mute Jagat and Zaya, please? Um, or ask them to mute themselves and see if that will help. Okay. So is this better? Okay. Much so better. I think, I Much, think better. Now, Much better. Much better. Now it's a bit clearer. So. So we know that this, this is having a repercussion and we're experiencing them uh, in terms of, of how it's affecting our political and, and civic space. And it's affecting the space differently in different places depending on um, what, what governments are doing uh, and also depending on, on where we are in the curve. So we recognize that on this call, different people are finding themselves in different uh, 
at different stages and in different contexts. Um, one particular piece that may be of interest to, to us on this call, given our line of work, is that this creates, this situation then creates both pressures and possibilities for, for civil society, right? So on the, one, on the one hand, we know that there are restrictions on movement assembly, um, uh, freedom of information, uh, et cetera, which, which all work against civil society. But at the same time, we are witnessing new, new developments, new innovations, new forms of mobilization and activism that uh, have potential to grow a movement and to, to make sure that when we cross over to the other side of this pandemic, we are in a, in a stronger place as citizens and, and, and associations of different groups. So, um, and I just want to, this is, this is um, a quote that comes from uh, a publication that came out in early April. And those same authors just published something yesterday where they were, again, deepening this reflection on the dynamism, um, on the dynamism of, of civil society despite the disruption, right? So really acknowledging that there is a lot happening in the civic space at the moment around mutual aid, around um, you know, repurposing. So groups are, are adjusting um, maybe their, their activities to begin producing emergency, um, protective equipment and so on. Uh, one of our, our partners at Cody, I know in India, Sewa has been shifted their production to producing masks and they've produced millions of masks in the last few weeks. Um, fighting disinformation, new forms of advocacy that are emerging despite the limitations on physical gathering. Um, so there, there's a lot happening in, this, in, the, in the civic space that, that reminds us that there are possibilities despite the pressures. Um, all of us have been involved in this project with Participedia, and the, 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 the partners at Participedia also have been recognizing that, that, that the moment, um, this, this pandemic, um, has led to lots of innovation already in terms of how citizens uh, and how people are engaging and adapting their, their, their typical ways of working in order to continue to promote transparency, accountability, and participation in, uh, in decisions that impact on communities. So um, just this is a screenshot of, of a page on Participedia, which has begun to document some of those kinds of activities. And, and so the, the, the previous slides, um, I hope just, just give a sense that, that you know, while there are challenges and, and we can speak about those, we are also interested in understanding the, the other side of that coin is that this is, this is a transformative moment with unprecedented challenge, but perhaps unprecedented opportunity and possibility. And we're quite um, fortunate today to have a group of people that are from all over the globe, literally gathered together. Um, and, and, and so we'd be interested in just hearing from you um, a little bit about how that is playing out in your context. Right, so the challenges, but also what what opportunity, what ray of light are you seeing? What's encouraging? What's inspiring uh, in terms of promoting um, citizen participation in, in the decisions that, uh, that affect communities at this point? I think I'll leave it there. Um, if if there's any thoughts coming to you, please um, write them write them in the in the chat uh, as we go along. We're going to move now to another round of discussion, kind of to build on what I've just said, um, and to hear from you how how things are are playing out in your context. Um, for that, I will pass it over again to Anne Marie, um, who will lead us through that round of discussion. Um, and so we look forward, I see that Wadan has several ideas coming to mind in the chat. So we'll look forward to hearing some of those. So over to you and Marie and group. Thank you, Julian, um, for giving us that um, contextual piece. Um, very important as we continue to reflect on what's happening around us and how it is that we can respond and support and support others. Um, so, so thank you, and in particular, thank you for helping us to focus on 
not um, the doom of, and gloom of what's happening, but the opportunities that are being presented to all of us to move this forward. Uh, we are going to be going into a discussion now, as Julian said, and what's important here is that we're going to ask each person to speak for just about a minute um, and, and a half in terms of sharing in response to the questions that are going to be raised in this piece. And let's listen to each other, right? I know there are distractions around us, but let's just try to be, let's just try to listen to each other. What is going to be shared are people's experiences. And so it's really going to be difficult for us to counter somebody's experience. Somebody's experience is what it is. So we're going to be listening and we're going to invite us to listen respectfully and to be respectful in our feedback. Once we have each had an opportunity to speak, once you have all had an opportunity to speak, then we're going to have about five minutes or so of discussion, and then we're going to move on to another set of questions um, and dialogue around what it is that we're learning through all of this. So I'm going to invite Gillian to move us to those questions now. And again, um, we are inviting everyone to speak. And in this particular instance, I'm going to invite you to raise your hands. Even though everyone is going to be speaking, we're going to be inviting you to raise your hands and that will help us to call on you in a particular order to, to engage. Um, if you don't raise your hand, we're still going to be prompting you to speak. But we invite you to raise your hands and that will help us with the order. And so the questions that we want you to reflect on and respond to are, what have you been working on or what is that you're involved in and how is that evolving? And in particular, how are priorities shifting? So what are you involved in and how are priorities shifting given the current context? What successes or opportunities are emerging to support participation, accountability and inclusion in the projects, programs and policies that you're working with? And we want you to bear in mind that uh, the kind of work we do happens at many different levels. It could be the level of family, it could be the level of, your, uh, of um, our organization, of our home communities, of a state or a nation. So at any of those levels, what it is that you've been working on, how is that evolving and what our priority is shifting, and what are the successes or opportunities that are emerging to support? A couple of things which our work is concerned with, participation, accountability, and inclusion. So at this point, I'm going to invite you to begin to raise your hands and we can begin to have that engagement. And, and again, you can also be placing in the chat, not just thoughts that are coming to you as you hear others speak, and questions that might be coming to you as you hear them speak. But if you have already shared and something else is there that you would want us to hear from you, you can put that in the chat as well, but just about a minute and a half for each person. Um, and remember how to sign our raise hand feature. Uh, for most persons, if you click on more, there will be something there that indicates how you raise your hand. The raise hand feature is right there. I see your hand, Barbara. Yes. All right, uh, um, go, go. Can I go ahead? Yes, but before you, before you go, Barbara, the others of you don't wait until she's through to raise your own hands. Just go ahead and raise hands. Go ahead, Barbara. Okay, um, so we work in my organization. I work um, trying to see how we can promote security governance in Nigeria. And for a period of time, I work with respect to citizens' participation in court processes, also citizens' participation in security dialogues, discourse, the security architecture in the country. Um, and that has been majorly what we're doing. Um, we also have a bit of assistance for indigent persons, those who can't afford services of lawyers. We do a lot of mediation and all that. Um, so for me, I think um, it's evolving because even, so I have to put in context COVID because COVID is like a, a turning point, I think for us. So in the sector is one of those opaque sectors, especially the security, there's hierarchy and all that. Then you have the justice sector that is so opaque, um, closed. But for some time now, and I think since 2015, they've been a bit open um, with gaining access to what they're doing. Let citizens get to monitor what actually goes on between the court processes, budgeting issues within the security sector. Um, but I think it's going to increase, it's going to be better now from what I'm seeing 
because of um, so a lot of a lot of campaigns, a lot of talk around open processes within the government system, especially the security and justice sector. Um, you would find that before we wouldn't know actually what the budgets of the security sector is. So, for instance, the police, but we're we're beginning to know a bit in some of the agencies. Um, again, sometimes they're a bit reserved with issues on use of technology. I think I've just mentioned that is one. Um, but now, it, I mean, they have to come to terms with it, with the use of technology. Uh, more so because the cases right now are lagging behind is for stalling judicial processes, is still detaining people for prolonged time in, in detention facilities as against ability of, I mean, for them to use technology and still go on with cases. So I don't see a reason why the courts cannot still sit and give judgments through whatever mediums, whether technology-wise, Zoom or what have you, because I know that recently I saw either in Uganda or Kenya, a, a judge actually delivered judgments virtually. Um, so for me, I think this is an opportunity. And just, sorry, I think I'm, my time is up. But just two days back, I noticed that the Attorney General of the Federation has released a press release trying to open up more space for um, use of technology within the courtrooms, ensuring that uh, detainees are not pro uh, de uh, delayed and detained for longer than, than necessary just because of COVID. Um, and, and the ability of the courts to harness themselves and the security sector to see that uh, some of these things are addressed. Um, on issues of accountability, um, I, th I think is, is one area that is still growing, but we hope that as, as much as possible, as one continues to engage on issues of advocacy, it would increase. Um, I, I think just to stop there, maybe other thoughts might come in later. Now. All right, thank you so much for that, Barbara. Um, very instructive indeed. Um, and so we are going now to move to Wesa, I think that's what you said you prefer to be called. Um, so Wesa? Yes. So right now, um, what I'm working on is trying to find uh, alternative. So for example, because I'm currently managing projects in Libya, and it's very, very hard. Actually, there is like a... a intersectionality or so that is we're going and at the same time there is COVID-19. So both things are not allowing us to actually do the parties and connect with organizations there to see in what way or how we can actually be more relevant and at the same time um, be more inclusive and participatory with uh, participatory and achieve our, um, our visions. So I've, I have not had the chance to, to think of what's successful because this is just a, still an ongoing process. Uh, but there are some ideas that are coming up right now um, that are proving to be very, very important to think of uh, while we are planning for all of that, which is thinking of sustainability. So when we do activities, COVID-19 is actually forcing us to think of how partners, for example, are gonna use the materials of the training further on their own or how are we going to do it in a way that makes it more sustainable. Another thing is participatory practices and inclusive practices. This is the way that things work because if you're not participatory, so for example, if you decide to do a training in a way without uh, uh, asking your partners or without consulting with them, that means that maybe not all of them are going to participate or because, not because they don't want to participate, but because the situation there does not allow them to participate. Another thing is around inequality and having, having inequality as an important idea that, or a concept that um, thinking of how women and how uh, people with disabilities or how others or other minority groups uh, or uh, um, uh, migrants and refugees and all of that, how, how the situation is affecting them more than others. Um, it's really very important to see the differences um, and how it affects people in different ways. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for that. Quite a few issues um, I heard, heard coming up there. Thank you so much. I'm not seeing any other hands at the moment, um, but I'm sure somebody else is ready to speak. So remember to raise your hand. 
or I'll just have to volunteer someone. May I speak from Nepal? Sure. And then um, that's Jagat. Yes. Go right ahead, Jagat. Yes. Okay. Right ahead. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Uh, I'm Jagat Bosnet, and um, I have been basically facilitating uh, land and agrarian rights uh, movements in Nepal for the last 25 years. And we developed the people's organizations called National Land Rights Forum. Uh, it has a branches like the, it has a community groups, village land rights forum, district level, district land rights forum, and national land rights forum. And then CSRC is a working micro level that generating power from ground and the macro level working with the Ministry of uh, Land Reform and Agriculture. Uh, and we basically organize landless smallholder and tenant and uh, share couples around 300,000, 3,000 3, groups and then organize around uh, more than uh, 100,000 households. Uh, now in this context, uh, we, we do three things in, in Corona things. Basically, it's a, we raise the issue of uh, landless, uh, basically agricultural laborers and uh, peasants issue because it's a, there is a lack of uh, the vegetables in market or uh, agriculture products in the market. And then uh, farmers, they didn't uh, get, uh, they are not uh, going to sell. The problem is one there. And then the another one is that basically the uh, rural poor peoples, those who are organized is the village land rights forum. forum. They are like uh, uh, some, some places, a uh, food deficit. And then we sung, we published the article firstly, and that that really generated the attention of the government. Then we submitted the letter to the ministry, uh, how we could work like the uh, support to the uh, community, uh, like uh, the we supported the uh, letter to the ministry. And third, basically, we connected the uh, local government to provide the relief to uh, to the landless smallholders and agricultural laborers uh, and um, fourth one also we are participating uh, we mobilize the uh, district land rights forum and national land rights forum to to support uh, the each each, uh, each others like uh, if there is a uh, higher like the if food surplus groups and then how to help to the food deficit groups that we have been doing in the uh, in this uh, difficult situation, lockdown situations, and then we mobilize local uh, uh, peoples, and then we see the like one of the opportunity uh, to work with them, the local government, in coming days uh, to to address such kinds of things. Uh, in our uh, uh, side, we are very active uh, at the local levels. We mobilize the local uh, leaders, district levels, uh, and also the national levels. Uh, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Jagat. Really appreciate that sharing. Um, thank you very much. And again, I'm, I'm not seeing any other hand at this point. So I'm, I'm going to, I see your hand, Trisha. Thank you very much. So we're going to go with Trisha next. Remember to mute, unmute yourself, Trisha. Okay. So uh, I work with NetRight. NetRight is the network. Uh, for women's rights and we specifically focus on women issues so some of the things we've been working on is to work with rural women and rural women farmers uh, to engage local authorities to assess their land rights uh, especially with smallholder women farmers to take advantage of some of the uh, flagship uh, programs that have been introduced by the Ghana government, such as planting for food and jobs. We've, uh, where, um, we've collaborated with the National Board for Small Scale Industries to train uh, rural women farmers on adding value to their products. Um, with the, uh, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture ensuring that uh, uh, access to extension extension, uh, extension services and also training and uh, voluntary female extension agents that will support uh, rural women pharma groups and we've built the capacity of women rights organizations in terms of 
resource mobilization um, because that's a huge problem for women rights organizations and community-based organizations. We are currently also working on, uh, there is a land bill that has gender equality and social inclusion provisions. So uh, we've done a lot of advocacy, creating awareness on those provisions to solicit public support to ensure that um, th those provisions are maintained. We've done a lot of parliamentary engagement to ensure that the land bill is, uh, is passed with the uh, gender equality and social inclusion provisions in fact. We are also working with other organizations to push for the passage of an affirmative action bill. Let me just, uh, for COVID-19, uh, what we've been doing is to push in for gender responsive interventions because we realize that some of the interventions that are being, in, um, measures that are being taken in Ghana are not gender responsive. For instance, schools have been closed, uh, and the lockdown, we, we were in partial lockdown has been lifted. So we have uh, working women, you know, working mothers have to go back to the office. They are now uh, challenged with, with the issue of getting people to take care of their children whilst they go to work and all that. We have a lot of uh, info, uh, informal economy, majority of them are women. We have a lot of vulnerable and homeless women. And these are some of the things that we are pushing for the government to ensure that the interventions that they come up with are gender responsive. Some of the things that have come up during this workout is also even the issue of home working at home. Because, uh, yes, we do flexible working, but uh, now there are also issues about looking at how best uh, we can improve our systems to ensure that our staff have that kind of flexibility to work at home. Now there is also the issue of we put all, um, there is a ban on public gatherings such as meetings and all that. So we've put some of our uh, work on hold. But then we are looking at even in this period where there is a ban on face to face meetings, how do we take advantage of virtual meetings to reach out to our communities? And the communities okay. that we, how do we take advantage of social distancing to reach out to, to our communities? Because, for instance, yes, that's when we use virtual meetings, we can. And get across to some group of people, but it's not everybody that uh, will be able to get and uh, 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 reach out to, given uh, the challenges that we have in terms of uh, internet connectivity and access to internet. So these are all things that we are looking at, oh, and we are also looking yes. at our yep. priority areas post COVID-19. So these are some of the things that we are looking at during this COVID period, and we are working on also even before COVID. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much um, for that. Uh, appreciate the sharing. Just reminding those who are coming after that we are trying to keep it brief, a minute and a half or so to share your points in response to the questions that we have posed. So thank you very much for that. And uh, we are now going to move on to patients. Remember to unmute yourself, patients. Yeah, I've done it. Uh, yeah, uh, what I'm, I'm working on at the moment, uh, I'm working as an independent consultant on governance, law, and development. And currently, I'm working on a project that aims to support the UN Security uh, Council Resolution 1325 on the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda. So it's a program that, is, uh, well, it's a program aimed meant to localize the, the women and peace and security agenda and see how we can take it to local communities across Cameroon. It's still at the beginning. Uh, we're still building the program, the framework of like the manuals, working on the manuals, working on how we're going to expand the project into communities. And we focused a lot on gender-based violence because it's been an issue uh, that the organization that is spearheading this project has been working on. And with the coming of COVID uh, and the confinement issues and the, the context of Cameroon, uh, lots of uh, or more cases of gender-based violence are coming up <laughs> with the confinement, with the COVID 
a, 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 a situation that we are having. And those are some of the issues we are working on. In terms of opportunities, I think I've shared in the comments, uh, some of the opportunities that are coming up for civil society uh, and, and for us as a whole, because we're, we, have been on, we have been in conflict for the past four years and we are like, I could say we have a three in one government claiming leadership of the country now and it's really violent. And this pandemic has only come to make things worse so like keeping down all the guns is an issue for us. Thank you. That's a bit of what's happening at my end. I'll write more in the comments. Appreciate that patience. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're hearing a lot of things and a lot of themes that are emerging from the sharing as well. Again, I'm not seeing any other, any new hands. So do I need to call on somebody? Okay, Janica, I was actually about to call on you. So thank you very much. Go right ahead. Perfect. So, okay, so full disclaimer, I have to be so honest. Um, I haven't worked in community development in about two years now as I went to teacher's college and have been working as a high school teacher. So today I really wanted to be inspired by all of you, which you have been doing. So thank you for that. Um, so I, my dad has been really sick. So I have actually taken a leave from, from working and have just been supporting colleagues in in their work so i used to work at an inner city school meaning we're working with children from all racial backgrounds and class backgrounds um and which is work that i love and so the challenge that we're seeing now in covid is for many students um school is their safe place it's their emotional safety place where they can um receive support and help um and and have a voice and so for those students this time where they're not at school because in canada no kids are in school um they're at home uh not feeling safe emotionally uh or mentally or spiritually etc so a lot of um my teaching colleagues have been figuring out ways to empower them with tools for emotional literacy um so that they can um help themselves but also figuring out ways to digitally support them has been a huge challenge during covid um so looking at different ways that they could receive counseling um or learn how to counsel themselves etc cetera, etc cetera. um but on this in terms of the second question what I'm seeing in BC, and I'm sure uh, Julian can comment on this as well, um, is there's been a lot of opportunities in terms of food security. And so just as a community member, I've been really interested in trying to get more involved in how to continue uh, to ensure that food is being distributed more equitably in BC, um, but also in terms of more and more people are gardening um, and learning how to grow their own food. So I feel very hopeful that COVID has propelled our, our citizens and government into looking at how we can be less reliant on the US and other countries for our food and invest more in our own uh, local environment. So that has been something that I've been um, seeing as kind of a opportunity for success or an opportunity for more participation and, and inclusion. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, there's a lot you're doing, so you're not only being inspired, you're also inspiring the rest of us. So thank you for that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to volunteer someone to speak. Um, Trisha, are you ready to, to share with us what the, your experiences are? I think Patricia, at this point? Has, Patricia has shared, I think. Patricia, oh yes, she did. Oh, oh yes, yes, Maria. Okay, thank you, Anne Marie. Okay, I am I am uh, working right now uh, in um, consultancy in FAO, and they asked me yesterday to switch the terms that or the products that I should should submit because the government is very interested in know about uh, the real food security. Um, um, Aid, aid that we have in Ecuador. In terms of the, the civil, um, the, the society, the, the citizenships, 
the citizens and as well as international aid, uh, food aid that we have right now. But uh, I can see from, um, I, I'm just starting in that uh, kind of applied research, but you know, I see many things in Ecuador and maybe you, you have read, but we face um, big constraints because we didn't have um, money reserves or our health system is uh, uh, collapsed. So we have uh, a lot of deaths in Guayaquil, which is um, a big city in the in, in near the ocean. Um, and in terms of food security, we are very affected because um, more than half of the population they don't have social insurance, so they rely on what they sell every day to eat and to pay their uh, their bills. No, so uh, I see some many challenges. But um, uh, I see also the, the civil society very organized, helping the other people, the other ones, the ones that are not able to work and they don't have uh, food and they don't have um, essential uh, things like shelter. So the civil so the society has been organized. There are two initiatives, two very big initiatives in the country that they are raising money um, inside the society and also from outside. Um, uh, those uh, initiatives are going to help the health system, the public health system, because they don't have enough hospitals and they don't have the um, intensive unit cares to help the people. So the people died because of that. Um, and also, we, I see that there is an opportunity to uh, revise the, the SDG2, which is uh, zero hunger, because now we are not able to gain that that objective around the world, you know, because that was talking about malnutrition. Now we have a food crisis, we have a humanitarian crisis, we don't have enough food for the people that is not able to, um, to, to work. And um, also I see a threat in food security because we are locked down in our provinces and many uh, food items come from another provinces. So the, the, the familiar agriculture, they are not able to travel with uh, vegetables or fruits from other provinces to Quito or to the big cities to sell their products. And um, mm -hmm. that is a very wide, uh, huge challenge for uh, the government and also for the civil society. Um, also, I see that we have to enforce, uh, reinforce these uh, citizens' uh, efforts that they are doing. They are doing many things uh, like very isolated, so we have to join them and we have to make them talk to improve this, uh, uh, the, the way that they are helping the people that is not able to work. Excellent, Maria. Thank you very much. And your additional thoughts. We invite you to put them in the chat as best as possible. I think we have two other persons who we haven't heard from as yet. Some porn, are you ready to share with us at this point? Okay, yes. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Some Porn. I'm from Thailand. And uh, my work, I'm working uh, about the community health impact assessment. Uh, so I uh, do empower community can do impact assessment by themselves and can uh, use information and data negotiate with the policy maker by themselves. And my project right now, I'm working with the small community uh, who live in the area uh, at the border among Thailand and Myanmar. Uh, this community, they have uh, effect from the lead contamination in the creek. So uh, right now, the government have the project to recover the creek. Uh, and I empower community have the capacity to how to engage the recovery, the process and mitigate the impact from the recovery, uh, the creek from the lead contamination. About the COVID-19, uh, it have the, the, the impact to this the community because uh, about the lockdown policy from uh, central government. 
So in the community, the community leader have the uh, not allow the villager go to outside the community, and the people from uh, outside cannot go to the community. So uh, uh, my team, uh, we cannot go the community to the monitor about the uh, the impact from the recovery, the click. So we so uh, worry about the, the, the water uh, that. Uh, that have the leaf contamination and uh, and and we concerned about the, the food because the if the villager cannot go to the outside the the, the village, uh, they maybe have no food from the market, so they have to to uh, buy the food from the the leaf that the, is had the contaminate from from the leaf. So we concerned about this. So what I do, uh, we even we cannot go to the village. Uh, we train the villager can use the Zoom. We set a Zoom call meeting, and we collect the data, uh, the, the the voice on the community, and we we did the report and we send the the report to the uh, pollution control and we find a way how to mitigate the impact uh, and we offer to go to the village and try to help them uh, to mitigate the impact and, and uh, uh, support the, the, the clean water to the villager and, and the, the, the food as well. Uh, okay, great. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for that. We have to be finding many ways to connect during this time. Ramona, I think we, you are the next person we have um, to speak. It appears that Zayed has fallen out of the meeting for one reason or the other. So please go right ahead, Ramona. Okay, thank you very much. Um, currently, I'm working on, maybe first of all, I need to um, precise that we are working on in different sectors. Uh, including child protection in emergencies, um, education in emergencies, youth economic empowerment in emergencies, and gender equality is a cross-cutting priority. So from, I will speak from a gender equality perspective. Currently, we are preparing assessments because we need to um, kind of understand how differently girls, boys, women, and men are affected by the COVID. That is how we have been working um, commonly in our other emergencies. So currently we are uh, preparing to have these basic uh, initial assessments where we understand how these different persons are impacted and how we can bring in really tailored solutions together with themselves. I'm also working on writing guidance notes on how we integrate gender equality within these different sectors. And I'm doing webinars as well. But what have changed uh, in the way we are working is that we have noticed that due to this COVID, much more people are concentrating on the same subject that is release a little bit the affected community, including the governments, the different government of countries, which we didn't have in the past. For example, in the past emergencies, we didn't see that um, mobilization and um, yeah, so many people gather together. So having the government, the UN uh, agencies and other agencies, including local, go uh, local um, organizations and working together on the same thing with the same plan is a really an opportunity to bring in the fact that we need to engage more with the communities especially the most vulnerable people in our community. And as for us as, as plan, we are much more focused on the adolescent girl because what we notice is that 
um, during a crisis, uh, she really falls within the cracks. So when we are designing, and when I say we, I'm referring to the humanitarian community, when we are all designing different programs, we either speak about the children or uh, about the women, but uh, we try to, we tend to forget that when you, you take uh, you, the intersectionality uh, between age and gender um, makes it much more difficult for the adolescent girls. So what is different is that we are much more focused on the adolescent girl and trying to make sure that in whatever we are uh, doing for uh, uh, accountability to affected community, we put into place this specific um, mechanism that uh, makes sure that the adolescent girl can participate and also voice her own concern while we um, appreciate or uh, value her participation also. So, Excellent. yeah, for now, I will stop there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, quite a bit has been shared, and there are some themes that kept coming up, things around issues around technology, sustainability, partnership, the whole matter of gender, whether it was just gender responsiveness, gender-based violence, the whole matter of inclusion. Um, I heard peace and security and food security coming up there. I heard greater participation from government, including local government, and things around movement being more restricted as well. Um, and we had indicated that we we're going to have a discussion at the end of this piece, but given how time has moved with us, we are going to have the discussion at the end of the, no the next round of um, sharing. But I want you, as we go into this next round, and I'm going to be handing over to Julian, is what is it that you have been hearing that has been inspiring? What have you been hearing from the colleagues online that has inspired you in one way or the other? So Julian, I'm going to hand over to you. And again, thank you everyone for your very, very generous sharing. Thanks, Anne-Marie, and, uh, and thank you everyone. So, so Anne-Marie, you've, you, you've, you've kind of recapped some of the themes that have emerged just from these really short uh, updates from, from people, right? Some, some definite patterns in terms of the issues that are coming to the fore. Um, I want to remind everyone that there is also a, a, a fairly vibrant uh, conversation going in the, in the chat, right? People are, are updating and, and adding more detail there, and I would encourage you to, to continue to do that. We will be sharing um, the, the chat uh, with everyone after the, um, after the session. Um, our intention was to, to wrap up the meeting in two minutes. And um, there's, <laughs> as, as there usually is, um, a, a bit of a tension between, uh, I think, where we've come to in our conversation and, and this time. So if, if someone needs to, to, um, to drop off uh, and to sign off, then, then um, that's okay. But I might suggest that we go for another 10, 10 or 15 minutes, just because we're kind of getting right into, right into the conversation. Um, there may be some reflections that you're having based on what you've heard from, from your colleagues, based on your own experience that you've described or that you've only described in part, or based on some of the things that you're reading in the chat. And as, as a, an organization, as, an, as, as a group of people that I think are all in some way or another concerned with, with learning, I think it's, it's also useful to take this opportunity, not just to take, to listen to, to what others are experiencing, but also to think about, um, you know, what, is, what does it mean? What are we actually learning? And, and how can we make sense of these experiences? Some of which we have in common. We've heard a lot about the gender dimension and the work being done on that front around the food security issues and so on. Um, and, and what is it that we're learning at different levels, right? So here, it's just um, an opportunity for us to take a, a moment to reflect on what are you learning about yourself in this, in this very unique moment? Um, 
Are you learning something about your, your organization, your work, your own practice, right? Are things, are things shifting and, and, and how do you make sense of, of what changes might be happening? Are you gaining new skills or are there new ideas or new attitudes that are, that are coming about? We are all in, in, in some way uh, involved in work that relates to governance in, in enhancing uh, or including different voices in decisions that are being made and pushing for accountability and transparency. So what, what is it that we're learning about, about the field, about, about those ideas, how they're practicing? Um, there are uncertain times. We, we, may be, um, we may be reimagining some of those, those ideas. And importantly, in, these, in, in this particular moment, what are you noticing about leadership? What kind of leadership are you noticing is being effective? What kind of leadership traits are, 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 are maybe less effective to, to move things ahead in this context? And as we reflect, obviously we, we come up with some answers, but we sometimes come up with more questions than answers. So if there are questions, new questions that are emerging in the, in the last few weeks and months, we'd be interested in just, in just hearing about those. Um, so I, I, I'm aware that some people have to leave. Um, I might, rather than doing a full round, let's just hear from those of you who, who feel inspired or, or provoked to, to, to say something about this. And again, we'll ask you to keep it brief. You don't have to speak to all the points, but if there's one or two of these points that speak to you, you want to offer a reflection, we'll invite a few people just to say something and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a bit of a conversation and bring the session to a close. I want to just say before people begin disconnecting that um, if you don't have time to get all of your, your inputs in, at, in this session, in this very short time we have, um, this is precisely why we're, we're offering the opportunity to, to work together in the next few weeks through, through some writing, uh, collaborative writing uh, opportunities that we can do together to try to capture some of what we just shared in terms of the practice, but also the reflections and the learning. We want to be capturing this as well. So with, with that in mind, if there are some of you who are, who, who are um, animated, so if some of these questions are speaking to you, um, we'd love to hear from, from a few people um, and engage in a bit of a discussion and then we'll just uh, talk about next steps in about 10 minutes uh, for those who can stay on. For those who can't stay on, we'll, we'll, I'll send an email to follow up with the recording and with, um, with how to engage in the next steps if you're interested. So again, we'll, we'll use the hands. I see that Wisa has her hand up. So Wisa, you, uh, the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself. Uh, hi again. Um, I think about learning from this uh, difficult time. Um, I'm learning more right now about myself and about how uh, I'm resilient to such situations. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking, uh, at a funny note, thinking of um, HR uh, questions and interviews, do you work well under stress? Well, I didn't sign up for this kind of stress. <laughs> So um, um, it's really um, a difficult time and I'm learning that, that we need to, to take care of ourselves and to be able to do whatever we're supposed to do, we need to really think of ourselves and think of how we can use this time to learn um, about how we can make the future better. So for example, thinking of work, is it taking over our lives? Uh, at the other side of the, of the equation, thinking of governance and what countries or what states, authoritarian states are doing in countries such as Algeria, for example, or other, um, trying to um, shut down people from speaking or, or going out to the streets or whatever. So thinking really of how we can use the current situation to think of sustainable means um, of work um, I think that's all that I can think of right now, but I'm sure that uh, um, in notes and reading whatever and hearing whatever other people have to say about that um, mm. will enlighten us even more. Thank you. 
Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's so important, uh, you know, your first point around, around self-care and, and, and remembering that, you know, as, as many things, it starts with us. And if we are not well, it's difficult to, to then reach out and support others. So to, to, to know what to do to take care of yourself is very important. I'm seeing in the chat that Jagat is talking about his learning around the rural economy being more sustainable than local governments, uh, it being more sustainable and local governments are more transparent than federal governments, right? So, so that's great. Um, I see that Patricia has to leave. Um, Jagat, I know you were having technical issues, so I, I did want to make a point to, to read that one out. And um, I see your hand, uh, Barbara, so you, you're next. Go ahead. Okay, um, I think before I used to feel that um, walking remotely is easier than walking in the office. <laughs> but it seems a lot more difficult. I'm just realizing that. That's one very funny learning. And then a lot of times I like to be on holiday, but I think um, the concept of lockdown is actually very frustrating. Why you don't, we can't move out. So for me, that's one major learning with the situation. But with respect to work, um, I think there are opportunities. So for instance, we had a situation where all the courts are shut down, but we had a case where a celebrity actually violated the lockdown order. And then the courts actually um, opened up and decided everything in one day. And so we're making up a lot of write-ups to see how we can en engage the courts to say the advocacy on, on the need for speedy trial can actually take place if the court system is willing and ready to work on it. How were they able to determine a case just because of COVID? And it wasn't as if it was a, um, an infected person, but it was more about someone that violated a lockdown and the court system was able to file everything the same day and judgment was delivered. So that's one thing I think... Um, it's an opportunity for us, those of us working in the sector, in the country, to see how we can advocate for them to think through. Is it possible that we can shorten the, system, the justice system, the process we are apply in the courtrooms, um, learning from the COVID time? So post-COVID now, are there things that we can pick up as, um, you know, as uh, lessons? So for me, that's basically um, what we're learning. Then I made mention of other things also. Our sector, like someone mentioned here, health and 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 educational sector have been backward. The budget is always below 20% uh, in, the, in the national budget. But from nowhere, everything is now being pumped into the health and educational sector, especially the health sector. They're setting up so many um, isolation centers, a lot of philanthropic donation into the health sector. Even the government itself is now re-strategizing into funding more of the health. We just hope that it's going to be more sustainable post-COVID, not just a, a COVID way of addressing issues. Right. So just in summary. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting just your, you know, your example about the timeliness of, of the decisions, which, which and, and there's a lot of examples coming out of, of things working more expediently or more efficiently in these, in these times that, than they did before. And then it, it does mm -hmm. prompt those questions of like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> why was it? Mm -hmm. Why was it difficult then? How, how, why was it so <laughs> difficult then? And can we, can we keep this? Uh, as the new normal, right? So, so mm -hmm. new new questions that that we need mm -hmm. to keep pushing when when this goes through. Anyone else have any thoughts or reflections they'd like to share, right? Um, or questions on what you've heard so far? Um, I would like to add something. Yes, Maria. <laughs> um, I see that um, the crisis are big opportunities in my society and also as we have experienced uh corruption in in the last uh, times in the last i see well, many decades of corruption in my country i see that the citizens now are taking in charge uh, some of the uh, food aid <coughs> sorry so uh, these citizens are not involved in corruption they are current people that are helping their other citizens. Mm -hmm. So it is a very good opportunity to reinforce um, this kind of accountability uh, that is inside our communities. We are not corrupt. We are not people that are corrupted, the Ecuadorians, the government, the government is corrupt, but we are not. The society is very, uh, it, it's a very gentle uh, society and always is trying to help the others. Uh, so you, ha you have experienced that in Ecuador. Uh, that is the kind of people that are living in, in the small towns and communities. So I think 
we uh, we should reinforce this uh, accountability, this participation, so uh, the citizens would uh, would be part of the uh, of a government which is uh, from the people, not from the the state uh, the stated uh, like uh, the, the governors that they are the same always. You know, they are they are re having this reelection with different names. And they are still corrupt. You know? So I think that we we should uh, see this. This is an opportunity for me. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's the systems have not been challenged like this in a very long time. Uh, and so those of us who, for a long time, has have been uh, arguing for change within systems. Um, I mean that's 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 the point, right? This is this is an opportunity, and and how is it that we can maneuver in these times to 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 use the opportunity and 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 the cracks that are now very obvious in those systems um, to kind of reimagine and work together. And I and I love what you said about drawing inspiration from what's happening on the ground in communities and in civil society, because I think. Um, I think that's where that's where it has to come from, and that's where the opportunities will will um, gain traction. Um, I see uh, comments from Yannicka, um, you know, again feeling hopeful that people can come together and dream up new systems. So I just want to echo that. I think it connects very well to what you were saying, Maria. Um, maybe we'll take one more comment here um, because this doesn't have to be the end of the conversation. I, I want to do one last slide after this to, to share the opportunity to continue um, to work together. Um, but before we do so, is there maybe one more person uh, that we haven't heard from who has thoughts on any of this? I'd like to say something, Julian. Um, hope I'm not stealing anybody's um, desire to speak at this point. But one of the things I have noticed is uh, and a question I pose in the chat about how, what strategies are you using to reach people at this time when they're so distracted? One of the things I've noticed is in my own country, Jamaica, is, is the, how the message is being packaged to go out to the people. And by that I mean the prime minister will speak on the regular uh, media platforms and the social media is, is rampant as I guess it is everywhere else. But our, our entertainers, um, and some of them who would not be necessarily accepted in the mainstream are also being used by government to help to send those messages because there are some people who will not listen to anything else. They continue to, whether it is, um, there's, yeah, there are some people who will not listen to anything else. They continue to listen only to their music, to the people who are, um, who promulgate those kinds, that, that kind of music, some of the kind of subcultures that exist. And so in Jamaica, we have our DJs, our disc jockeys that are typically not very accepted in the mainstream. And I find that government is also using them to send messages and to use formal platforms to do that as well. So when we have one of our disc jockeys um, interviewing the Minister of Health, for example, because that's, an, that's a deliberate strategy of the minister, there are lots of people who would not listen to a typical journalist interviewing the minister who would now listen because this person called Spice is going to be speaking. Um, and that, that for me is continuously a big question. What are those strategies that we are using to reach people? Because we also assume that when we go and we speak on the radio and the television and put things in the newspaper, that the messages get into everyone. And we say that everyone has a phone, so they're getting all of the messages. Mm -hmm. But are we, talking about, are we thinking about those who can't read? Are we talking about those who have other kinds of barriers who may not have access to data like some people have access to data and so on and so forth so it's the new strategies and these very informal not necessarily informal ways but using resources including people who are not normally a part of the mainstream formal way of communicating through government and from government to get to people mm -hmm. so that for me continues to be an, an area of interest because Again, I want to reiterate that we do assume that people are getting the message because it's so much out there, but not everybody's hearing what is happening and understanding how it is that they protect themselves. And I want to refer to something that Jagat placed in the chat about how people in the rural areas and the urban areas are being impacted. 
um, and are responding to COVID, and in, in particular, what, what kinds of impact it's having on people's, how they are coping with the physical constraints and mentally. Um, whether it is the availability of food and there are more land for you to do and go and do your gardening, or it is just being, having people packed into a space when your movement is being restricted. When you're told that you have to stay home and you live in one room with a number of persons, as opposed to being in the rural area when you can be out in your yard, et cetera, et cetera. And that also has um, connotations around people's economic status. You might live in a bigger house, so it's easier for you and your family to be home and be comfortable. But somebody mm -hmm. who lives in a, in a less, um, in a smaller space with less um, amenities and so on, how are they coping in this time? And what are the, what are the implications for mental and emotional health going forward? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Anne Marie. It's um, uh, I, I'm I'm listening and thinking about you know those of the the many people who on this call spoke about intersectionality and being mindful of, of you know the different groups and how they're impacted differently and and how this moment has really um, heightened some vulnerabilities for some and 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 is is playing into that and then the concrete ways that we deal with it. One of which is is engaging with communities and and so i appreciate what you said about you know choosing the the right message and the right messengers and we know that that was a key that was a key factor in um in addressing ebola in in west africa um was going through the local leaderships and and uh local chiefs and not until they did that and and worked the government worked with with the local and cultural leadership did uh, an impact really, you know, it really enhanced uh, the um, the impact of solving the, e the Ebola. So some lessons to, to draw from other experiences as well. So thank you, everyone. Um, I do, uh, you know, uh, want to bring this to a close while we're relatively not too too far over time. Um, I want to thank you. I want to I want to really appreciate um, the time that you've 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 taken to join us and the really rich um, experiences you've shared and reflections. As I mentioned, um, this, this mustn't be the last uh, engagement we have with each other. And, uh, and here is what we would propose as a next step for those of you who are interested in, in, continuing, um, in continuing this discussion, but continuing it, I suppose, um, in a different medium. Um, I mentioned in my initial email that there would be an opportunity to do some collective writing. Uh, so, so some of you have talked about how, you, how you're writers and you like to process and to reflect it and, and make sense of your experiences through writing. So this might be an opportunity of interest to some, right? Compared to the piece of writing we've done together in the past, this, will, this would be a much less intensive process. We would be looking for um, essentially what you shared today, but to, to kind of flesh it out a little bit more uh, in a one to two page submission um, that would ask you essentially sets of questions on the two things we talked about. One is what experiences are happening in your context that pertain to citizen engagement and governance that you're either a part of or maybe not a part of, but that, that you're witnessing, that, that you can take stock of. Um, that would that would be worth sharing. So so uh, so what is the experience? What is the innovation or the adaptation of of governance and engagement work? And then a second piece, which is the which is related to the last set of questions we were talking, which is around the learning. What meaning do you make of this? What's your analysis of what's of what's of what's happening? Right. So it would be about a half a page to a page on each of those questions, and. We would like to produce, uh, because those would be individual submissions that are rather short, we would, Anne Marie and I would work to bring them all together in one piece and then send that around to, to the different people who contributed to make sure that it's all, um, that it's all good um, before we, we publish. Um, we've heard from Participedia that they would be very interested in hearing from, from us around that which means that there's a bit of participedia funding that we can use to to provide a stipend just for the for the um, the time that's been used now the amount of the stipend is dependent in some way in in the number of people who um, who are uh, going to engage in this but it would be a minimum of 
of two hundred dollars um, that we could we could provide uh, upon completion. So for for those who are interested, it would look like this. It would mean that um, we would send a template to guide you in in the production of of this two pager, um, which we'd ask you we we give you about a week to submit back to us. And then much like we did with the Participedia case studies, there may be one or two rounds of, of additional comments or questions just to make sure that we are capturing the story and the reflections ac accurately um, before we get to kind of the final draft one to two page piece. Um, once we would have that, uh, Anne-Marie and I would take about uh, a week uh, or so to produce the, the, full, the full publication and uh, just kind of try to quickly get some feedback and, and have it sent out uh, through Participedia and also through um, Cody channels and maybe other channels that we could talk about exploring, uh, depending on what the nature of, of what is the output. So you don't have to answer now. This is, this is just to present to you um, the proposal. We hope um, that, that um, you know, everyone will be interested. Um, but I will send this out again uh, just in an email later today uh, so that those who have signed off can, can have the information and then you could signal your interest um, in, in responding to that email. I see Peggy is joining us uh, from Kenya. Um, welcome, Peggy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I I'm wondering whether we got the time wrong uh, because we're just wrapping up. Um, Sorry. Sorry guys, we had a problem with the internet, mm. so I couldn't, I couldn't make it to join. I've just come, uh, managed to connect right now. Okay, oh, I'm sorry to hear about the internet problems, but it's, it's great to hear your voice, Peggy, and um, we, we've just recorded the whole piece, so you'll have access to all of that. And uh, okay. I was just explaining to everyone in terms of next steps, um, this opportunity for engaging in some writing together. Um, and that I will be sending an email later today before the end of the day with more detail about this, um, as well as where to find the recording for this for this webinar uh, and the uh, the chat log, right? So because there's been lots of rich discussion on the chat. Okay. Um, so before signing off uh, officially, um, I'll ask Anne Marie first to. Uh, uh, fill in any gaps I may have missed and uh, and then see if there are under any other questions from others if uh, before we before we leave Anne Marie anything I missed um, hi Julia thank you very much for that I have to pause to say hi to Peggy and ask her to turn on her <laughs> her, her, her video so I can see her hi Peggy <laughs> it's really good to see you and um, um, I'm just gonna ask others to give us while we do oh this my God. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. You my baby couldn't have been here. Hey. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, patience. Um, Peg, Julian, I think you pretty much covered everything. Um, Maria had a question in the chat asking about um, whether or not there, there could be a template provided, and I did indicate to her that a guide will be provided, which is a pretty much I a template. I can't Maria, there's a lot of noise in the back. Um, I think patience. Patience, could you put yourself on mute, please? I hope that helps, Peggy. Okay. Right. So that we will, in fact, be providing the guide, Maria, which is a pretty much a template that guides. Um, okay. Oh, it's the sequencing of what it is that you're going to be doing. But okay. again, um, very, very happy to have had an opportunity to connect with everyone. Very, very um, critical work that continues to happen, and again, lots of opportunities and to use one of what I consider to be one of um, Julian's favorite terms, entry points, for us to work with the different constituencies and to work with new groups as well. Okay. Um, for me, um, I have actually been quite inspired and yeah. have, have now thought about how it is that I can be a little bit more formal in some of the things that I'm doing, almost casually, but really are, I think are making a difference and can make a difference to much larger constituencies and communities yeah. so let us continue to do the work let us continue to do the work together i think coming together helps and yes. outside of the i never discussed this with julian before but outside of the fact that we're going to be connecting through our writing 
perhaps one of the things that we can do, Julian, is a little bit further down the road um, when we are when we have something to get back together like this. Um, just to close this piece and to see how it is that we want to continue to do what we do because as you said in one of our conversations yesterday two what is happening two months from now a lot of what is happening will seem almost irrelevant yeah because there's just so much happening and so much changing as mm. the time goes by so how else are we going to be wanting to respond yeah. and from what kind of a platform so thank you guys it's good to see you all of you thank you all hi peggy yeah. hi peggy hi. Hi, hi, Marie. <laughs> Take care. It's good to see you, Peggy, and and thank you, everyone. And yes, Anne Marie, I think I think that's a fantastic uh, idea. We we will uh, provide other opportunities for us to connect like this uh, into the future for sure. So thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Keep well. You too. We'll be in touch. Oh, thank you very much. Bye bye. bye. Recording. Bye. 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 Bye.